Here we see a combination of concepts that have appeared in previous videos. In this video, we see a single electron, which corresponds to many knots in the space-time manifold. The electron has a charge, and that charge implies an electric field, and that electric field suppresses the production of virtual photons. And we see that the density of virtual photons decreases as we get closer to the electron at the center. For this reason, the electron reduces the entropy of the virtual photons, and thereby reduces the entropy of the space-time manifold. And that reduction in entropy is represented by the term L sub m in the equation at the top, where L sub m stands for the Lagrangian of matter. In this case, the matter is the electron. But we know that the space-time manifold maximizes entropy, and the electron is reducing the entropy of the space-time manifold. So we can ask, is there any way that the space-time manifold can reduce the impact of the electron on the entropy of the space-time manifold? One way to do this would be to force the electron and its electric field into a smaller space. And by reducing the amount of volume occupied by the electric field, we would reduce the amount of impact that, that electric field has on the entropy. And that relationship between the electric field and the entropy is important to the physics in this situation. Specifically, it results in a field equation governing the behavior of the electric field. And all of that field equation is included in the Lagrangian L sub m. But there's another way of reducing the impact of the electron on the entropy of the space-time manifold. And to do that, we change the actual geometry of the space-time manifold. We recall a previous video where we demonstrated the geometry of waves in the space-time manifold and showed that the motion of the waves implies time dilation. And when we talk about reducing the volume of the electron, that time dilation affects the four-dimensional volume of the space-time manifold where the four-dimensional volume takes into account spatial distances, but also duration and time. And so by having the electron move, we dilate the amount of time associated with the, that electron's presence on the manifold, which means that a clock located close to the electron will be running more slowly than a clock that is far away. And this reduces the effective four-dimensional volume of the space-time manifold in the region around the electron. The electron reduces the entropy of the space-time manifold, and time dilation reduces the electron's impact on that entropy. In the equation at the top, that four-dimensional volume can be considered to be a component of the last term, dm. dm is the volume measure of the space-time manifold, and by dilating time, we've reduced the four-dimensional volume measure, dm. But we also see that in order to create these waves, we need to stretch the space-time manifold. We want the electron to be moving because the motion implies time dilation, but in order for it to move, we need waves that have a certain amplitude and frequency. To increase the velocity of that electron motion, we can either increase the amplitude of the waves or their frequency, but either way increases the stretching of the space-time manifold. And as we've seen in a previous video, stretching the space-time manifold reduces its entropy. That reduction in entropy is represented by the scalar curvature term, R. So this video shows a few different ways that the entropy of the space-time manifold is affected by the presence of matter. The most direct way is that the matter reduces the entropy of the space-time manifold. For example, in this case, the electron reduces the entropy associated with virtual photons. Then there is a geometric response to that. That geometric response is waves in the space-time manifold whose motion time dilate the electron and reduce its impact on the entropy. But those waves in turn reduce the entropy of the space-time manifold. And so there's a limit to how large those waves will be in response to a particular amount of entropy reduction by matter. We remember that the total amount of branch weight is conserved by stretching of the manifold, and this conservation also applies to time dilation. The total amount of branch weight is conserved. Maximizing entropy means maximizing the amount of entropy on that branch weight. And the entropy is impaired by stretching and matter. The amount of entropy impairment is given by the equation at the top. We can say then that entropy maximization is equivalent to minimizing entropy impairment. And that is equivalent to minimizing the integral of W times the quantity R plus L sub M over the space-time manifold.
We can also say that the entropy of the space-time manifold is very, very large in comparison to the effect that matter has on that entropy. And the effects that we show here are greatly exaggerated. And a single electron, like the one shown in this example, would actually have a very small effect on that entropy. So that term L sub m, the Lagrangian of matter, which is the amount by which matter affects the entropy of the space-time manifold, will tend to be very small for most physically realistic cases. And of course, if there is no matter present, then L sub m is equal to zero. And this means that the magnitude of the waves that one would expect as a consequence of the presence of matter would also be very small. This means that the scalar curvature r would also tend to be very small. And again, if there's no matter present, then the scalar curvature r would be zero. Finally, there's the term w, which is the branch weight associated with each point on the manifold. The maximization of entropy implies that the branch weight w will tend to diffuse to some approximately uniform distribution. Which is to say that over short distances, the average number of branches at one point will be approximately the same number as the average number of branches at some nearby point. So we have an integral with a very large and approximately constant term w, and two very small terms r and l sub m, which can be considered very close to zero. Over short distances, we can therefore take the approximation that w is constant and the behavior is dominated by the relationship between the scalar curvature r and the Lagrangian of matter, l sub m. In this case, we get a Lagrangian where the action s is equal to an integral of a constant term w times the quantity r plus l sub m integrated over the space-time manifold. And this is the Einstein-Hilbert action of general relativity. We see then that this approximation yields the same relationship between matter and curvature of the space-time manifold as the one that exists in general relativity. And we therefore have a model which, on the one hand, produces the behavior of quantum mechanics through the interactions of the branches of the space-time manifold and the knots in those branches, and on the other hand, produces the behavior of general relativity through maximization of the entropy of the space-time manifold and the way that curvature and matter relate to that entropy. We previously mentioned how diffusion will cause the branch weight w to be approximately uniform over short distance scales. But we can also ask the question, what about large distance scales, where the diffusion of the branch weight w has not caused it to be approximately uniform? What about the scale of galaxies, for example, or even intergalactic space? Over these very large distance scales, diffusion of the branch weight would be relatively slow, and there could be variation of the total amount of branch weight, depending upon where you are in the universe. This variation in branch weight would have a geometric effect on the space-time manifold, and that geometric effect would have the same form as the geometry that we see associated with gravity. In that case, we see a geometric distortion of space-time having a similar form as the one that we see with the gravitational field, but there is no massive particle. And that effect resulting from variation of the branch weight would have the same appearance as the effect that is currently attributed to dark matter. In this model then, variation of the branch weight w may explain some or all of the effect that is currently attributed to dark matter.